In this video, I'm going to show you a super quick method for creating one of the most difficult joints on a character, the hips. Hours of painful weight painting are far behind you, as with some tiny additions to your character rig, you can get some amazing deformations completely automatically. I've been using this for all of my characters, and I'm about to show you how you can too. So here's an example character from Mixamo with a mocap animation. The hip deformations here look fine, but this is due to the perfected weight painting already on it. So if we take the Mixmo character and unparent the mesh so they're no longer connected, and we can go into the mesh vertex groups and delete them all so they are fully disconnected. So this represents where you'd normally be with your separate character mesh ready to be connected to your armature. We'd shift select the mesh, then the armature, control P and parent it with automatic weights so the two are now connected. Now as you can see, the default deformations we get at the hips are not good. It compresses the torso when the legs move sideways, and when they rotate forwards, it rotates takes part of the body with it, which do not translate well into animation. So how do we fix this? Well normally, this is where you'd need to go in and weight paint to fix it, but for the hips it can be really difficult and time consuming because it's such a complex joint. But we have a solution. Let's unparent and disconnect the mesh again for now. Select your armature and go into edit mode. At the top of one of the legs using the 3D cursor, add a new bone with shift A and shrink it down and move it so it's inside the mesh. We can see it all clear in wireframe mode. Then pressing E, extrude vertically a longer bone, then extrude a bone again a similar size to the first. Now in the front view, we want to position these so the middle bone overlaps the leg bone. We want the bottom bone to be the same angle as the leg, and the top bone to stay vertical so it points up the body. Then adjust them left and right to create a sort of natural curve, going from the leg up into the body. These don't need to be exact, and they can all be adjusted later. We want to name these bones something like hip upper dot L for the top bone, for the middle hip dot L, and the bottom bone hip lower dot L. We add dot L so we can mirror this onto the right side too at the end. Currently this is a chain where each bone is parented to the next, but we actually want to select the hip upper bone in edit mode, hit alt P and clear the parent so it's no longer the child of this hip bone. Now in pose mode on the middle hip bone, under the bone constraints, add a stretch to constraint. Select the target to be the armature, and for the bone, select the hip upper bone. Also tick volume min and max at one. Now when we move the top and bottom bones, the middle hip bone automatically stretches between the two points. Now we want to go into the object data properties, display as, and select B bone. This is how the bones are normally displayed on more complex rigs because of how versatile they are. Currently the bones are really thin, so to change the display size of a bone, select it and hit Ctrl Alt S and you can scale how big it appears. So here we can press A to select all. Maybe deselect the hands by holding Ctrl and dragging over them, and Ctrl Alt S and drag to make them more visible. And where you have overlapping bones such as here, you can vary the sizes to make each of them more visible. When I have a setup like this, I always make the end bone slightly bigger to mark the end points. Now select the hip bone under bone properties and bendy bones. We want to increase the segments to a higher number. And as you can see here, it creates the segments in the bone. Now scroll down further and for the start and end handle, select tangent. Then select X, Z and E's for each. And for the start handle, choose the lower hip bone. And for the end handle, choose the upper hip bone. Now when you move the outer hip bones, the bendy bone in the middle curves with it. Finally for this part, in edit mode, select the lower hip bones, then shift select the thigh bone, hit control P, keep offset to parent it, then select the upper hip bone, then shift select whatever hip or lower spine bone sits in the center alongside it, and again with control P, parent it. One final thing is we'll only want the hip bendy bone to actually deform the mesh, which can be controlled by this tick box. So in the bone properties of the upper and lower bones, untick this deform box. Now when we rotate the leg by the thigh bone, the hip bone bends with it. Just a point to note, if you readjust the base position of these bones in edit mode and you go into pose mode, the hip bone can suddenly be out of place. Whenever this happens, just go to the stretch constraint and hit this small cross which resets the original length. Now to flip this to the other side, we can use symmetrize, which is why we added the dot L at the ends. Select the three hip bones under armature, hit symmetrize and it will copy the bones across. Now you may have an extra step depending on how your leg bones are named. If the thigh bones are labelled the same with just dot L and dot R, then it should work. But like on this Mixamo rig, they aren't named this way, so the bottom hip bone can't find a mirrored leg bone to parent itself to. 
So in edit mode, just reparent the new lower hip bone to the right leg and it should all work fine. And if you are using this with something like a Mixamo rig, then don't change these leg names to try and fix it. Just reparent it manually like I've done here. So the naming system still works for transferring mocap animations. Now the final step is adding a new bone. In edit mode, snap the cursor to a point in the middle and add a bone. Remember, use Control alt s to make it bigger. Now scale and readjust the bone to where the legs join and we can label this something like hip center. Now add a bone constraint selecting armature. We want to add three target bones. First is the hip or spine bone directly above it. Here I'll just copy across the bone name and we'll set this to one. Then add the two hip bones, which are these two bones, and set them each to 0.5. Now this bone is a deformed bone that is used to keep the mesh in the center in the right place. So now if we rotate the legs, this bone will always move to a center point between them. Now we've added three extra deformed bones to our armature. So now, if we connect it to our mesh, in object mode, select the character mesh, shift select the armature, control P, select armature deform with automatic weights. And now, if we rotate the leg bones, we get a much more natural looking hip deformation right out of the box. And if we compare it to the version without these new bones, the torso stays perfectly in shape. And it's the same if you rotate the leg forwards. The original had this strange thinning of the torso, whereas this torso stays the same and creates a much more natural crease. Remember, this hasn't involved any weight painting at all, so now you have a character that's much more ready to animate straight out of the box. Depending on the design of the character, you may need to make some adjustments to the positioning of the bones, or you can do some weight painting on top, but now you've got three extra bones to weight paint between, making it so much easier to create the deformations that work. The cool thing about this too is it isn't a part of the actual chain of the leg, meaning the animation works exactly the same. If you select these bones, press M, and select one of these boxes, you can actually hide them on a different layer. So for example, here's a Mixamo character with the new bones added, and here's a mocap animation from Mixamo. If I shift select the character armature, then the animation armature, go to object, link transfer data, link animation data, it copies the animation keyframes across, and as you can see, it works completely normally. And if we make this layer visible, you can see the bones are there doing their job. I actually found that sometimes it can provide even better deformations than just weight painting can achieve. This character on the left is the default Mixamo weight painting, and the right is with the added bones and automatically assigned weights, so no manual weight painting has been done here, and you can see the deformations are no longer creating strange creases, and can actually look better. If you want to copy this onto other rigs, in edit mode, just select all of the new hip bones, shift D to duplicate them and right click so they stay in place, hit P and separate the bones. Now they are in a separate armature, you can snap this armature to the same origin as the armature you want to add it to. Shift select the armature you're adding it to, right click, join. Here it's disappeared, but this is because it was on a different layer, so we just need to make it visible in the bone layers. And now, in edit mode, make sure to turn on X mirroring, and you just need to move them into the right position. Parent the top hip bones to the spine, and then make sure to turn off X mirroring before you parent the bottom hip bones to each individual leg. In pose mode, reset the original length of the stretch to constraint. Then for the middle bone, in the armature constraint, remove the armature and the bone, and select the new armature, selecting the relevant spine bone. And it should all be ready. Again, just parent it with automatic weights, and you have your character ready to go. I really hope this helps. I want to thank you all so much for all of the support you've given the channel recently. We've just hit over 10,000 subscribers, which is unbelievable. I really cannot thank you enough. Thank you for watching this video, hit subscribe if you haven't already for more animation content and tutorials on the way, and I will see you next time.